unafraid, right or wrong, we got post-game reaction to the both Pac-12 after dark games. Arizona State knocked off Washington 13-7, to and the Oregon Ducks got drowned by um, Stanford 49-7. to We're going to start out with the Washington game because it ended first. And honestly, truth be told, it was more exciting. Um, before I get to the obligatory I told you so's with Washington saying that they were overrated, first of all, I want to give the Pac-12 credit. I've been saying it all day long, all year long so far, that they are the that the Pac-12 is the best conference in all of football. Like there are no easy wins. It is competitive every single week. You have to come out and ball out, otherwise you're not gonna win. So with the start out with Arizona State, first of all, I don't understand how this team is sitting at Three and three right now. I'm yeah, three and three. They lost to San Diego State, which is like confusing and puzzling, right? Because they lost to San Diego State, they lost to Texas Tech in a in a thriller, fifty two. Uh, sorry, yeah, fifty two forty five. Manny Wilkins has been playing great football. They lost to Stanford. I mean, it's really confusing. Todd Graham's team, but. The death of Washington today is what their Achilles heel has been all year. Washington's Achilles heel all year has been, same thing last year, is Jake Browning does not play well versus good defenses. He doesn't. He didn't play well last year versus USC, versus Utah, versus Alabama, any of those teams. And his deficiencies are hidden behind Washington's ability to run the football and their defense. And today, they couldn't run the ball very well with Miles Gaskins. And what, did, and what did you have? You had Jake Browning back there running for his life and with his eyes not downfield, scared to pull the trigger, didn't want to turn the ball over, and he didn't make plays. That's the truth. And when you look at Washington's third down efficiency, that's where the tail of the game was. They were three for 14. That's not going to get it done. Neither team turned the ball over Arizona State or Washington. But this Washington team, that's why in the beginning of the season, I had them as my number one overrated team of the entire college football season because I knew that this was coming. I knew that this was coming for the Washington Huskies. I'm going to get to the Oregon Ducks in a minute. Um, one positive, though, from the game is that the Washington defense is really, really good. Um yeah, and uh, yeah, I've talked about Sam Darnold and all that stuff. I'll get up to talking about USC and all of them as well at some point in time in this telecast. Thank you guys so much. Unafraid, right or wrong. Please make sure you swipe up, like the feed, share the feed, continue the conversation. Um, I will tell you, there is a playmaker on Arizona State that killed Oregon as well that I was very impressed with, aside from the quarterback, Manny Wilkins. It's... Uh, um, Harry, the wide receiver, this kid is good. I'm actually impressed with him because Nikhil Harry played well against Washington, played well against Oregon, made plays. I mean, I'm looking at him and I'm like, wow, this is an NFL wide receiver. This is a dude. Like, this kid's a stud. And I am very surprised at, hmm, I would have thought that Jake Browning would have fared a little bit better, even though I've said he's overrated and, and not overrated in terms of he sucks, but just not as good as people thought he was. He finished 17 for 30 today for 139 yards. I know he got sacked five, six times and, you know, they're only they had eight tackles for loss. But truth be told, at the end of the game, you know, Washington barely had over 200 yards of total offense. That's not going to get it done. That's not going to win. You can't win football games like that, and especially not in the Pac-12. Like, and, and when you look at the way this weekend went, between Washington State losing. not See, it would have been different if Washington State just lost to Cal, but they got dominated by Cal. I mean, just absolutely dominated. The quarterback threw five picks. Uh, they gave up 30-some points, only scored, um, like barely scored. The Pac-12 may have put itself out of the whole college football playoff this weekend. 
Because had Washington State just lost, you know, lost a close game, then then that could cut it, right? Because they still have a decent enough schedule to do that. And they knocked off USC, which is a big deal. So Washington State would have still had a chance. But Washington had no room for error with their non-conference schedule. No room for error. Because they had Rutgers, Montana, and Fresno State. And I've been killing them for that all year. And they finally played a team that was worth something. I'll give Colorado State uh, and Cal a little bit of credit. But they finally played a team that, that had some special weapons. And look what, look what happened. They went down today. Um, next up, though, Oregon versus Stanford. You guys, please make sure you like the feed, share the feed. Um, we're getting into the Oregon game now. Then we're going to go in to the Pac-12 in general. I'll start out with the question, though. So Oregon lost to Stanford 49-7. to How much of this loss do I put on Willie Taggart? I mean, honestly, I can't put any of this loss on Willie Taggart. You cannot do anything when you do not have a quarterback. I mean, he inherited this situation. He inherited Justin Herbert, who is a top-notch Pac-12 quarterback. He's a top-notch Pac-12 quarterback. So he inherited him, which is a big deal. But he also inherited Taylor Alley, and he inherited Burmeister as well. And after, and you can't blame the coach. You can't blame the coach when your team does not show up and play. Like, you just can't. Um, the defense started out shaky in the beginning of the game. They weren't physical. Um, Bryce Love was running all over the place. But then the defense seemed to settle down after a while, which was encouraging. But it does nothing when you can't move the football. Did, another question. Um, how can a program like Oregon not have a backup that can throw the ball? Okay, my wife has asked me this question two or three times. And um, Oregon has had some quarterbacks transfer out. That's how you end up in that situation. Because I get it that when, uh, when we played in the uh, TCU, right? TCU and we didn't have a backup quarterback, couldn't throw the ball then. How does this sort of thing keep happening? And then people ask me, why aren't the Ducks able to run the football? Well, I'll tell you this. If you notice what Stanford did, if you notice what happened last week against Washington State, as soon as they figured out that Oregon could not throw the football, they were playing zero coverage. Zero coverage means that there are no safeties in the back. They are literally like putting nine men in the box, and double dog daring you to throw it over their head. And Braxton could not throw the ball. Uh, Burmeister couldn't throw the ball effectively enough to challenge the defense in any way. I mean, it was really sad to see an Oregon offense that had been so potent through the first five games, really, come crashing not even crashing back down to earth. I mean, it was like a missile shot out of the sky. It was bad. And people don't always realize the correlation between offense and defense, right? Because even though the defense gave up some plays and all that stuff, they were still playing physical today. And when you don't have an offense that can move the ball at all, like Oregon has had right that like Oregon has right now. When you don't have an offense that can move the ball, it is frustrating for the wide receivers. It's frustrating for the running backs because they don't get opportunities, which doesn't allow the, the defense to play honest. Because Stanford wasn't playing honest at all. You, you have to remember box counts. Let me explain something to you. I know this is going to get just a hair technical for a second for you guys, but just bear with me. So... How you decide where and when to run the ball a lot of times in football is based upon box counts. That means how many defensive players are in the box. And the quarterback doesn't necessarily count as a runner so much. He does a little bit, but not so much. So you're 
on defense, you're technically in an advantage, a plus one advantage. So when you don't have to keep a safety over the top for a pass play, when you can just leave the corners out there all by themselves because you know that they're not going to get beat, and if they do, then the quarterback can't get it there anyway, you load up on the run, keep the team in third and long, uh, second and longs, you force them to throw the ball, and then when they can't, you get turnovers. You get turnovers, you get picks. And I, I'll, I'll say this. You guys can send in all your questions about the Ducks now because I'm covering the Ducks. Um, I will say this, is that Willie Taggart has to make sure that he does not allow the team to be fractured by what's going on with the offense. Because he switched quarterbacks a couple times. He sent Taylor Alley in, uh, brought back some Burmeister back in, and the wide receivers, running backs, and the defense. Because I've been on teams where the offense couldn't score and the um, quarterback wasn't playing well in the NFL. I've been, I've been through that. So, and what happens is, is there gets to be a little bit of snipiness between the running backs, wide receivers, and then the defense as well. Because the defense is saying, listen, we're getting stopped sometimes. Like, you have to go out and score the football at some point in time. And so that sort of thing can bring back what Willie Taggart was talking about with the team that he inherited, a bunch of guys who didn't like each other. you end up in that situation where you have a bunch of guys that don't like each other. And he can't let the team be fractured by that. Because when you look at these stats, when you look at those stats from the Oregon game, I mean, they are pitiful at best, at best, right? Because you have, they passed for a grand total, a grand total of 33 yards. 33 yards when you can't pass the ball. I mean, do you realize what type of advantage that the defense is in when they do not have to even like guard one element of the of the field? And uh, you guys send in all your Oregon questions. I'm going to pivot to uh, the Pac-12 as a whole and then um, send in your questions, comments, and I'll get to those. USC, I, I know most of you guys who are Pac-12 fans, um, you probably saw a little bit of the uh, Utah-USC game. And I've been adamant about Sam Darnold in terms of him not being as great as everybody says he is. I do believe he is an NFL quarterback and all that. But as for right now, he needs to stay in school. That's what Sam Darnold needs to do. Because at this point in time, he's not it. He's not the guy that everybody says he is because he's a turnover machine. Just a turnover machine. Same way with um, with um, a bunch of order, other quarterbacks in the, in the conference. Oh, huh, that's funny. Uh, who won the ASU game? Uh, Washington beat uh, Arizona. I'm sorry, Arizona State beat Washington 13-7. to And uh, Stanford just absolutely boat raced Oregon 49-7. Uh, to um, The Pac-12 is not overrated. It is the best conference in the entire country. And I'm telling you that from top to bottom, with the exception of Oregon State, because they stink. Um. I mean, the, any team can beat any other team in the conference, especially Arizona, Arizona State, UCLA, USC, Stanford, Cal, Oregon, or well, Oregon with their starting quarterback. Um, oh, the U, U of A game, UCLA lost to Arizona. Arizona beat them pretty bad. Um, oh, be quiet. My my uh, wife just yelled from the back. Not as bad as Stanford beat Oregon. We're playing with our third string quarterback. Get out of here. Who cares? Score more. <laughs> oh, and hey, any Ducks uh, fans who will be in uh, L.A. next week for the Washington for the Oregon 
UCLA game here at the Rose Bowl. Make sure you holler at me. I will be at the game uh, at the Oregon tailgate. Anyways, she, she's heckling me from the back, saying, saying that we're going to lose. Um, I, I was surprised, though. I, I was surprised, though, with the Oregon uh, running attack because they did run the ball 43 times and still managed 276 yards, which is 6.4 yards per carry and a touchdown. And my wife asked me a question. So I, I'm, I, I might have to treat her like Cam Newton – um, because she, cause she asked me a crazy question. Because uh, she told me that UCLA was averaging 4.2 yards per carry. And I was like, that's not impressive in college. And she said, well, if you're, if you're averaging 4.2 yards a carry, why wouldn't you ever pass the ball when you can get a first down every time? I was like, oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that, that would be nice, but it accounts for long runs and all that stuff as well. But anyways, um, Going forward in the Pac-12, I would say that when, when you look at the standings of the conference, um, actually, I'll get, get to these questions. I'm still disappointed about Washington State. What a weird weekend. How do I feel about Washington State now? Um, I still like Washington State as a team. I mean, uh, Luke, Luke Falk. That's twice this season that I felt like he showed a lack of toughness, like where he just kind of quit. And and it, it was very disappointing. So if he he's one of those players that if he gets in a rut, he just he just falls down the hole. Um, question was just asked, who do I believe is going to go to the Rose Bowl? And at this point in time, I mean, geez louise, the, the best team in the conference looks like Stanford. Stanford, who I who everybody was burying when they were one and two, is on top of the conference. And, you know, they don't look like they can be beat by Washington. Don't look like they can be beat by USC. Um um, next question, though. Who do I think is going to the Rose Bowl? I mean, I, I just kind of gave that away right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay Stanford. I mean, they look physical and tough again, which they didn't look in the beginning of the season. Um, who do I think is going to win the Arizona-Arizona State game? I mean, I'm, I'm going to go with the, the team with the better quarterback. Because I'm going to go with uh, Arizona State. Because uh, Arizona, they've had multiple quarterbacks in this year. They've had Tate in. They've had Brandon Dawkins. I don't know what the hell is going on there with, with Rich Rod. I don't know who's going to show up. But I trust uh, Arizona State, especially after this game today. And I'm going to tell you, it is going to be so difficult to make my Pac-12 power rankings this, this week. Because... I mean, let's let's literally examine this, right? Oregon beat Cal, right? Cal turned around and just destroyed Washington State, who beat up on USC. Stanford lost to San Diego State, came back and beat up on Oregon. They beat up on other teams. I mean, it, it is just impossible to, I mean, like, I'm going to have to pull out these advanced metrics this weekend. Um, and going forward for the Oregon football team, I would say, obviously, the future looks bright with recruiting. And especially when you're trying to recruit quarterbacks. If you're a quarterback, you have to be looking at the team saying, mm, uh, I can come in here and get, get some playing time. I come here and get some playing time because I'm going to be honest, and I, I don't like to rag on young players especially, but Braxton Burmeister hasn't shown anything. I mean, nothing at all. No promise. No, no moments of flash. Where last year when Justin Herbert came in as a true freshman, Justin Herbert – he had moments of excellence. I mean, literally. I mean, even in the even in the loss to 
the really bad loss to um, to Washington. He still had moments where he looked pretty fantastic. So I'm not going to – like, there's no mistake between these two teams. No, the Oregon offensive line is fine. You just can't threaten people at all when the defense literally can just sit back there, pin pin their ears back, not worry about the pass, not worry about the play action, not worry about any of that. Just come forward and stop the run. That makes it easy to play football. Makes it really easy to play football and oh, for the defense and really hard to play defense for uh, offense for the um, for the Ducks. Uh, do you guys have any more questions today before I get out of here on right or wrong, unafraid reaction to the game? Oh my God, I'm with right or wrong. Oh. <laughs> See, this is what what happens when you have a 17 year old daughter. All right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, you guys. Uh, Peace out. I will catch you guys later.